Alrighty then, welcome back. Before we actually start building out our chains and flows and having all sorts of fun, we're going to go ahead and deploy our instances of Flowwise and Langflow. So that way we can have a persistent environment that will store our flows between sessions and we never have to worry about losing data in that sense. And I will show you in a second so that you don't make the same mistake that I did when I started out and I created a whole bunch of stuff and yeah, I lost it <laughs> because I didn't have a disk or a volume as Railway calls it attached. So in any case, we are going to do this because we just don't really want to be tied down to the local development approach. But of course, you certainly are more than welcome to run your instance of Flowwise or Linkflow locally as well. And you will see links included in this lecture so that you can set those up via Docker or however you want to. And it's also important to remember that Railway is just one of the platforms that allows us to do this. Another quite popular one is Render. And I also have a number of deployments there, but to be honest with you, I prefer Railway much, much more. Um, so Railway, what is it? It's a cloud-based infrastructure platform. It's very reliable quite well known in the industry. So we'll go ahead and look at the essentials of deployment here, actually push two, two live deployments, and then quickly explore them once they're up. In a separate lecture, I'll be covering how to attach custom domains to them. So if you want to essentially have your own instance that is branded, something like AI studio dot whatever your imagination or your specific project, of course, will call for the different things. So first, what you want to do is you want to head over to railway.app slash templates. And we can quickly get started here by essentially typing flowwise. Oops. And you will see a couple of choices. So if you click on this one, this one was created by Henry himself, who is the creator of Flowwise. And one important thing right away is what I just mentioned earlier. You can see here that there is an instruction that calls for adding a volume and a volume. Think of it. It's a disk. It's a storage disk. So we can write data to it. It's it's not quite like a Postgres or MySQL database, but it's essentially it's that. So it makes sure that we don't have this ephemeral instance where every time we shut it down and come back to it, all of our flows are gone. So here you see the option to either do this manually or we can click into this other pre-built template that already has a volume attached. And when you're working on railway with uh, railway templates, an easy way to discern as to which uh, template actually has data, the data disk attached to it, is that it'll have this kind of thing and uh, disk icon. So let's go ahead and click deploy now. We are going to select whatever it is that you want to do. And we will say flow wise, Lang masters, course. So we have our volume, I'm going to create a private repo, or you can create a public repo. And here are all of the different environment variables that we need to configure. So to quickly take a look at one of the key differentiating factors between Flowwise and Linkflow, Although this might not be for long, and I have received word from the Linkflow team pretty recently that they are working on this. But currently in Flowwise, there is a designated credentials management system. And as you can see here, 
or I guess it's a module. It's pretty simple. It's nothing ultra complex, but it allows a user or it allows us to add credentials into a locker of sorts and then store them there. So this way we don't have to constantly copy paste, copy paste keys, and it can get quite messy, especially when you have complex flows. So during deployment, you want to visit this section here inside of the Flowwise documentation. And we will have a couple of variables that we need to essentially add in order to structure our ENV. So we'll have our port, a passphrase. This passphrase is an arbitrary value that you can essentially set to whatever you want. You can use mass, my, oh, sorry, my passphrase as is or do something differently. So we will go ahead and use this as a guide when doing our deployment. So what I'll do here is just scoot this out of the way. Just a second. Okay. So the passphrase, we'll just do something random. Port, as you can see in the documentation, is 3000. The secret key path will be right here. So Henry made it very easy for us, which again is awesome. So root flow wise log path, grab this and paste database path right here and API key path all right here. Okay, so we designated into which, by the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but you will need to go through the basic railway account setup, which is super simple. If you have a GitHub account, you will attach it here. And basically then you can create all sorts of repos very quickly and railway handles pretty much all the heavy lifting. And we've got everything we need. It looks good. So let's go ahead and deploy and see what happens. As you could see, we are launching into our new project. It gives us this random name here. All of this, of course, can be changed later. And it's going to now build this for us from a pre-configured set of files so we can essentially bypass all of the complex technical heavy lifting and boom just get up and running and again this is optional you don't have to do a deployment to railway and if you just want to run locally that's totally fine because the software itself will function in the same way so we'll go ahead and wait here for a couple minutes for it to finish and then I will be back. The initial deployment might take a little bit longer than subsequent deployments, but uh, yeah, just grab a cup of coffee, do what you need to do. If you are familiar with Railway or Render or even the offerings from AWS or Google Cloud, all of this stuff uh, takes time. And if you're not familiar with it, welcome <laughs> to the world of waiting. And of course, sometimes these deployments fail, things don't go as expected. And at least we always have, or usually have a pretty detailed set of logs that we can see in real time as the deployment is happening. So if something fails, we do have access to the core reason so that then we can either use one of the agents that we're going to build or chat GPT or Claude or whichever language model you want or agent to start troubleshooting with 
or ask perhaps somebody that's on the technical side. We have arrived. Choo! Our deployment is live. It's easy to tell because we have our green deployment is in green. We have the check mark. So first thing that you're going to want to do, unless you're just in totally private testing prototyping mode, is you want to click on this, the main service that is attached to our project. And actually, before we do that, what I like to do, but again, you don't have to do that. So you want to go into click out of this, out of the service itself and click on the main settings. And instead of this random name, let's give it an actual def uh, name that again, this is up to you completely. So whatever you want to do, but I prefer to attach it to the domain name. So it's really easy to, to, to navigate when, especially when you have a lot of deployments up. So something like Langmasters flow wise dot, let's just do that. Okay. We're going to update it. It's updated. Now it's much easier to recognize. So then we go back into the service and we click on variables here. So each and every project or pretty much every yeah, project that you're going to run on railway, you're going to, or anywhere, you're going to have some sort of ENV variables. And as you can see here, this is what we added during our deployment. So as per Henry's suggestion here, we want to add authorization. And all that this will do is that when we open up the link to our service, it will just ask us to enter the username and password that we created. You can do this either through the form editor, but I prefer to use the raw and just work inside of the this interface or also with the JSON. So we will go ahead and say flowwise underscore username equals, let's say, Langmasters and then flowwise underscore password, whatever you want. We'll just do chicken big one, two, three. So make sure you remember that. Actually, no, you don't need to remember this because you can easily uh, view this anytime. So Langmasters and chicken big one, two, three. Okay. So here's an important thing. Every time you update the variables, it's going to redeploy. And as you could see, we actually had a crash here, which is interesting. I'm not sure exactly what that is due to, but that's going to happen in this course. As we go through it, we will troubleshoot and navigate some questions together. So it's back to that hands-on approach. But aside from the crash happening, anytime that you're going to add things or take away things here, you will it will automatically trigger a redeploy so that it can apply the new ENV information to, to your deployment. And typically what I found is that these, for these deployments that are past the first one should go much quicker. So that first one took about 12 minutes. This one should probably just take three or four minutes. So I will see you in a minute here once it finishes. All righty, welcome back. So here will be, here is our first or my <laughs> first mistake that I made. And even though I have been working um, with these technologies for some time and uh, also uh, elsewhere in, in the tech world, I still make mistakes. And I think it's important to, to learn from experts who perhaps make less mistakes and sometimes to do more experiential learning, following along and breaking things and troubleshooting things. What happened was why the deployment kept crashing is because we had actually entered the completely wrong data into the ENV variables. So instead of using the information from the docs as we did, 
we actually need to put in these paths so that they're correctly mapped inside of railway. And this will generate a nice and healthy experience for us. You want to make sure that you're using the slash OPT paths in order to handle the railway deployment correctly. The username and password and the secret, the passphrase can be still arbitrary, but these are definitive. They're very set in stone. So please make sure to follow these guys into your deployment. Okay, so we're not going to update here because we don't need to trigger the redeploy. By the way, one more note on exactly what volumes are on railway. So they are different from databases like traditional Postgres or MySQL. The volumes are really used for storage and it's a persistent data disk rather than a specific table based database. So that's one uh, important note there. Okay, so we have our deployment, we have the disk attached to it, we have our ENV set up. So if we go to settings now, we have a number of options here, and you're more than welcome to explore them. Most of them you won't really uh, be referencing. Uh, one big one you want to change is go ahead and set this restart policy to always because it's it just ensures that we always have a uptime and that's a good thing then we also will periodically want to check for updates and that will look like this so here is the mo the the most important part so our service is now accessible on at this link and if you want to do the custom domain, as I had men mentioned, you would add this here. So for example, again, langmasterscourse.com, boom, it's available. We add it and setting up domain names will cover in a separate video, but it's a really simple process. It's you go into whatever service you're using, GoDaddy, Google Domain, Squarespace, uh, Namecheap, it's there's many different services. And you simply add a CNAME record and point it to this string. So we're going to dismiss that we're not going to worry about that right now. We're actually just going to delete that. And let's go ahead and access this. Okay, there we are. So whenever we click on this link, and we wherever we are, we never have to worry about setting up our local environment and then firing it up, shutting it down at the end of the day, that's it, this is just available. And it functions as basically a standard SAS uh, dashboard. It's yeah, so we're gonna and I already forgot what our username was, <laughs> believe it or not, working with so many different ones. Okay, it's Langmasters, Chicken Big, one, two, three. Woo! Langmasters, Chicken Big, one, two, three. By the way, this will not be available to you, unfortunately as this is just for demo purposes and in order to prevent abuse and all sorts of potential nefarious activity. Yeah, I will be changing this. So this service will not be available uh, at that link or with these credentials once you're watching this course. But for now, whatever your username and your password is, go ahead and log in and I'll see you in the next video.